Hello, and welcome to the QDU Academy for the second round of the Grade 6 competition for 2023. Today, we're going to be looking at the second long prep topic, which is that we should ban tolls on roads and bridges. In this video, we're going to go over a few things. We're firstly going to look at how to reflect from your previous debate. Secondly, we're then going to look at the context within which this particular debate is taking place. And then we're going to go into some strategy for how to approach this debate, looking at setup, so how to define current terms, how to uh, model the debate, and then how to think about how to structure your arguments and rebuttal. So by now, your team should have all done one debate so far this year. For some of you, that will mean that you have had an experience speaking in a debate this year. For some of you, hopefully that means that you watch the rest of your team. But that means that you should have some idea of what your team or you personally have done particularly well and what you can improve on from your last debate. I think it's a very good idea in debating to make sure that you're taking notes during the adjudication that the adjudicator is giving and to get a couple of small pieces of feedback after the end of the adjudication from the adjudicator because that means that at this point you can look at your notes from the previous debate and think about what you did well and what you can improve on. I think it's important to take particular note of both of these things. It's important to, oh, it's obviously important to know what you didn't do as well on because that's a very easy area for you to improve. But it's also important to make sure that you're keeping track of what you're doing well because that means that you can continue to do so. So at this point, I'd like you to pause the recording for a couple of minutes, go through your notes from your previous debate and give yourself a couple of things that you would like to focus on for this debate, whether those are points of improvement or whether they're points of things that you're going to continue doing well that you did from last time. So pause the video for a couple of minutes and go over that before moving on to the next slide. So having done that, hopefully you have some idea of a couple of things that you can focus on in this debate. But what we're going to look at now is the context for this particular debate. I think that context is quite important to understand in debates. It's a good thing to research before you go into writing your arguments for long prep debates. I think it's not necessarily necessary to like research points for the debate, but it's important to ask a couple of questions about the world in which a debate is taking place. So for this topic about banning tolls on roads and bridges, I think there are a few questions that you should research before this, before starting to write your case. So these are, firstly, why do we use tolls? Have an idea as to why we currently use tolls. Uh, do we use them to like limit the number of people that use things such as roads and bridges? Do we use them to like increase revenue so that we can maintain roads and bridges? Maybe it's like several different reasons all combined together, but make sure you have some idea of the answer to that question. The second thing is to have an idea about where there are tolls near you. And the reason for that isn't necessarily that that will form the basis of arguments, but it means that you can use them as examples within the debate. Maybe that means that you know that there are tolls on things such as the Gateway Bridge or the Clem Jones Tunnel, or maybe there are other places that have tolls uh, closer to you. And that means that you have examples that you can point to during the debate. And then the third thing to look at is once you sort of have an idea as to why we use tolls, have a brief research into what are other ways that we could achieve those goals. On this slide, it says, like, for example, uh, assuming that tolls are somewhat used to fund roads and bridges, whether it's their creation or it's their maintenance, how else can those things be funded? How else can we get that money? Or if we use tolls to uh, stop the overcrowding of these like roads and bridges, what other ways could we decrease congestion on roads and bridge on, on roads on, on bridges and tunnels and roads and things like that? So have a look into that so that you have some idea of the world in which this debate is taking place because it will help you talk about real examples during the debate. Next thing that you need to do is you need to have an idea of the definition of the topic. Now, any topic that has the word ban in it is the kind of topic that is much less likely, in my opinion, to have definitional disputes where the negative team is going to disagree with the affirmative team's uh, definition of the topic because the word ban is a very clear and absolute word. But it's still important that both teams have thought about the definition before the debate takes place. I think there are a few words that it's important to look at in this topic. Some of them it's always important to look at. Some of them, uh, it's very they're, they're very standard, but I'm going to talk about them in this particular debate because it's only your second and you may not have come across them before. So the first word to look at is the word we. Now, the word we in debating refers to who is going to be doing the thing in the topic. In this topic, when you are banning tolls on roads and bridges, 
that means that the we is probably the government. In some debates, it will be the government, in lots of debates. But in some debates, it will be individual people making decisions, and that is who we refers to. Sometimes it will be schools that are making decisions. And even when it's governments, sometimes that will also vary. Maybe it will be the Australian government. Maybe it will be the Queensland government. Maybe it will be the Brisbane Council. Maybe it will be sort of all of the global uh, national governments. It's important to ask yourself who we refers to in the, each debate. But in this debate, I think it's fairly simple. It's probably the government at either the local or the federal level, probably within Australia. So that's not a very overly complicated word to think about. The second word that it's important to look at is the word should. The word should is important for two reasons. Firstly, it tells you the type of debate that, that this is. When you have the word should in a topic, it means that you are participating in what is we refer to as a policy debate, or sometimes we just call it a should debate because that's the key word. And in a policy or a should debate, that means that the affirmative team needs to solve a problem in the world using the thing that is given in the topic. So that means the affirmative team in this debate will be looking for a problem that is solved by implementing this ban. And what that means is the word should says that we have an obligation to do the thing in the topic. And some people would say it is a moral and practical obligation. Ideally, you just need to like talk about why we should do it, make it seem like it's a very important thing to do. The third word to look at, and I haven't put this in the slides just because otherwise it would have taken up a lot of space, is the word ban. The word ban in debating is quite important because you need to think about how absolute you are going to ban it. When you start to look at models, we'll also think of how are you going to ban it? How are you going to enforce it? But the word ban is a quite absolute word. I'd always recommend when you're defining the word ban that it's just not allowed. And that should be a good definition because it means that you're unlikely to have sort of very half and half models. Having looked at those three words, those three words are the kind of thing that show up in lots and lots of topics. So you can have very standard definitions of them, and we probably won't go over them in future sessions because we've looked at them here, but they're still important to know about. The next two terms that we're going to look at are very specific to this debate. The first of them is tolls. So have an idea about what exactly you're going to say a toll is. Is it a fee that you need to pay to use this sort of like infrastructure? Is it something else? Uh, I think that there are fairly standard definitions that you can find. Don't go too cute with it. Like just pick something that's very easy to understand, something that's uh, unlikely to be disagreed with by the other team, but to make sure you define that term. And the last thing to look at is roads and bridges. I think that there's one particular, I think that the words roads and bridges are very easy to understand. There's one particular thing that I think you need to be careful of in this debate, and that is that tolls are usually used for a variation of roads and bridges and also tunnels. I think that when you define things like roads and bridges, it would be an unstrategic thing as an affirmative team to, for example, say we define it as just roads and bridges and specifically say that you're not including tunnels in this ban. And the reason for that is that if there's any good reason to ban uh, tolls on roads and bridges, it probably also applies to tunnels. It will be difficult to come up with a reason why tunnels should be treated differently. So that means that when you're defining the topic, I think it's probably fair to say roads and bridges referring to like all roads that use tolls be those uh, like roads that are on the flat, bridges that are in the air or tunnels that are underground. Uh, and that is a fairly all encompassing model or just don't talk about tunnels at all. But it is something that you might come across if you think about the examples of where we currently use tolls and tunnels aren't mentioned in the topic, but I think you should treat them the same way as the affirmative team. So hopefully at that point, you have some idea of how to define the keywords that are specific for this topic, those being about tolls and roads and bridges, and the words in this topic that you will see in lots of other topics. We almost all the time should, or like a, a tiny bit less often, but still almost all the time. And ban, in, maybe not in all topics, but it's quite a frequent word that shows up in topics. So it's good to have an idea of it. The next thing to look at is how to consider a model and a counter model. So the model for an affirmative team in a should debate is, the, is a really important thing to make sure that you have because it refers to how you are going to do the thing that the topic says that you should do. And in a ban debate, I think it's, even, it, it's another thing that is quite simple and you can have it in a quite cut and copy way a lot of the time. It's not something you need to think too much about. In a ban topic, there are two things that you need to consider in the model. The first is 
what exactly you are doing. And I think in a band debate, that means you are just not allowing something to happen. In this case, tolls being applied to roads and bridges. The second thing that you should think about in any ban topic is how you are going to enforce this ban. What is stopping someone building a road and just like setting up a booth and uh, and like charging people to use that road? How are you going to ban it? And maybe in this particular topic, you think that that is something that is uh, going to be talked about a lot by the negative team that they'll say, oh, there might be loads of secret tolls and it's important to put a lot of effort into reg into how you're going to stop people breaking this rule. Maybe you think, oh, it's going to be really obvious that people are breaking this and you don't need to spend a lot of time on it. But you should still spend some time, at the very least before the debate, thinking about how you would uh, enforce your ban in case it's something you need to bring up in rebuttal, for example. As the negative team, you have two choices as what your model can be in a ban debate and a should debate. So uh, in, in other should debates, there are more choices, but in a ban debate, I think there are sort of two choices that you can make for your counter model. The simplest counter model for a negative team to use is to not have one, in which case your counter model or your stance is just supporting the status quo, which is what we call, which is the term we use to describe the way things currently are. And if your model is the status quo, you don't even really need to call it a model. You can just say, uh, in, in, instead of this policy, we would just support the status quo. The second thing that you can do, especially in ban debates, is what we call regulating. And I'll get in a small bit of time as to sort of the strategy behind this. But basically, whenever one team bans something, the other team needs to make sure that it still exists, but you do not need to allow it to exist in like an absolute sense all of the time. So for example, uh, like, if one team needed to ban pets, the other team could regulate pets and say you can have pets, but you can only have certain animals as pets. In this topic, you could, for example, say we should keep tolls, but there should be a maximum price that they're allowed to be, or they should only be allowed on certain types of roads. Now, I'll get into a bit as to what I sort of think about the strategy of that is. Um, I think that regulating is sort of a quite defensive way to approach debates, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it is something that I think you should be conscious of when you're making that choice. So whenever you support regulation in a debate, it sort of means that you are you, you agree with the affirmative team that something could be a problem. Say, for example, in this debate, you say that you will set a maximum amount that tolls can be to a certain amount of dollars. That would be sort of agreeing with the affirmative team if the affirmative team said that there was a problem, that tolls were expensive and they stopped people using roads. And you want to be careful with that because agreeing with the affirmative team on something like that is a thing that is a win for the affirmative team. And so whenever you regulate something, you want to be very confident that you are getting sort of the best of both worlds and not losing out on some of your benefits. So, for example, if you were talking about uh, on the negative team that actually tolls are great because they uh, mean that fewer people are using roads and bridges and there's less congestion, then actually that benefit is even greater the more expensive a toll is. And so you want to be careful that you're not losing out on your benefits just because you're trying to uh, minimize some of the affirmative team's benefits. So that doesn't mean you shouldn't ever regulate. There are some occasions when it's an incredibly sensible thing to do, but you want to be conscious of, I'm making my case weaker in order to make the other case, the other team's case weaker. Is it worth that trade-off, especially if it's sort of a bit of a win for the other team for me to do this? Um, so if you want to set some kind of limit on tolls, or if you want to set like restrictions on where they can be, that's a completely reasonable thing to do, but make sure that you think about is this something that is going to make my argument stronger as well as it will probably make them a bit weaker? OK, cool. At this point, we've now gone over what we refer to as the setup for the debate. And the setup is sort of everything you do before you start writing your points. So you've now you've thought about the topic in abstract. You've thought about defining the words within the topic. You've thought about what are you going to support in terms of your model or your counter model or not a counter model if you support the status quo. It, we now get to the point when we start to brainstorm point ideas. And this is something that if you do set up well, you will have already thought about lots of the kinds of arguments you can run in your research phase or um, possibly in, in your model, but you shouldn't rely on models for arguments. 
you should now be able to start to brainstorm arguments. So I think that uh, if we were doing this session uh, like in a Zoom call, I'd get everyone to sort of go into breakout rooms and consider this and then we'd share ideas. But if you're watching this video by in a team, this is a good point to pause the video and spend maybe three or four minutes in complete silence, just sort of coming up with arguments for your side of the topic and then sharing them. Or even if you're just watching this video by yourself, pause the video, spend two or three minutes writing down some ideas for points that you could run. Now, I think there are a couple of things that you should think of when you're brainstorming point ideas. The first thing is that you should try and have as many really different ideas as possible. And what that means is that at the end of each point, there should be some sort of outcome that you are talking about and try and make four points that have very different outcomes because that means that it's really easy to have four separate points. If you have two points, for example, that are both about, uh, let's say that you're affirmative and you have two points that are both about uh, the fact that now it's cheaper and more people can afford to use toll roads, then often that means that those two points can sort of be put together and you can just turn them into one bigger point. So if you get to that point, try and think about uh, coming up with other arguments. A good way to think about more different types of things if you are struggling is to think about what we refer to in debating as the different stakeholders that a debate affects. Now, there are sort of a couple of types of stakeholders. The first type of stakeholder is the ones that are primarily affected by the topic. So when you ban uh, tolls on roads and bridges, the things that are really directly affected are anyone that is currently putting a toll on a road or bridge or anyone that is currently paying for a toll on a road or bridge. And so those are the sort of stakeholders that are really obviously affected by a topic. And those are the good ones to think of first. But then after that, you can start to think of, oh, what are sort of the stakeholders that are affected by the effects that you are making here? And maybe at that point, you can think about uh, what is going to happen to the people that are currently uh, paying for the tolls, what are currently happening for the people that are making the tolls or receiving the money from the tolls, and how does that change their behavior that changes how other people react? And so you can sort of eventually get sort of a spider web that starts in the middle and then you've got stakeholders that are affected and the effects of those affect more people and then you can start to come up with a lot of different groups and the more different groups you have often the more different points you have so that's one good way to think of more points if you're struggling for that idea um but yeah take a couple of seconds to brainstorm points specifically for your team but it's also kind of useful to think about the other team's points as well um and then we shall move on Having finished the brainstorming phase, ideally you will have like four points that you think of as being quite different points that you can then turn into your arguments. And that should be two arguments for your first speaker, two arguments for your second speaker. Now, the next thing to do is to turn those thoughts into arguments. Now, there are a couple of things that I think are important in structuring an argument. The first thing to do is you should always start with, make your argument just one sentence and have it reach the conclusion of the topic. So for example, we should ban tolls on roads and bridges because it would make it cheaper and more affordable. That's a, that's a point and it's really clearly says the topic in it. And I think that's important because you should try and have like a, a your, one sentence that is the point and it's like, if this statement is true, you, your team should win the debate. And then you spend time proving that statement. So there are a couple of questions to ask when you're making, uh, when you're when you're justifying your argument. The first thing to do is sort of ask yourself, why is this claim true? Give sort of an explanation of the um, argument. So a good structure in a should debate, when sort of a thing is happening because that's what the affirmative team does, is to start off with what's a problem? How is that problem going to be solved by this thing? And sort of tell that as a story. And within that point, it's good to sort of use evidence and examples. Don't rely on evidence and examples as sort of instead of reasons, but use them to sort of illustrate your ideas. So you could say, uh, what is the current problem that this point is solving? It's that roads and tolls are super expensive. Now, what do we do? We remove the fact that people need to pay for it, and this changes people's behavior in a way that's beneficial. And you can say like, for example, 
uh, here are groups of people that might want to use the gateway bridge but choose not to because it will be too expensive and then you can sort of use those examples to make your point seem really real um, if you're on the negative team because you're not really solving a problem you're pointing out how a problem is going to begin to exist you want to sort of tell the story of how things are going to get worse and so talk about how things are currently good and how a problem is going to be created so like currently the government can use the money from roads and bridges to pay for some other service that the government provides. Now, they're not going to be collecting as much money. And obviously, same more words than I'm saying. I'm making the points very quickly right now. But you tell that story from uh, like in turning it into the problem that this policy will create. And so I think that's a good structure to use for um, uh, for, for should debates in particular. Um, if you're a negative team and you have a counter model, it's a bit more different because you're not saying necessarily that the affirmative team is creating a problem if you're saying that the problem should be solved in a different way. But in that case, you want to talk about like, here's how the problem would be better solved by your policy and be really deliberate about making it sound like it's better under your side. At the end of each point, you should then sort of restate the point label. And you can say, this means that we should ban tolls on roads and bridges, or this means that we should not ban tolls on roads and bridges because of the reason that you've just explained. Hopefully that makes sense and you have a good idea of how to structure that argument then. And then the last thing to look at is how to approach rebuttal. And rebuttal is something that, because you're very early on in your debating careers, it's the kind of thing that I think it's good to structure as sort of look at the two arguments that the speaker before you has said, unless you're a third speaker, in which case you should look at like all four arguments that the other team has said and come up with a reason why each of those arguments is wrong. Now, a helpful hint to turn sort of to, to practice making actively good rebuttal, because it's it, it's quite a scary thing to do rebuttal, especially when you're quite early on in your debating uh, journey, is to look at both the point label that the other team is saying and then look at the reason why they t that team thinks that that statement is true. So they will make a point and then they will have a reason why that point is true. Try and give a reason why their reason is wrong, because it's an easy trap to fall into where one team will give a point label uh, such as this is uh, like, I, I, probably not for this particular debate, but like this is uh, good for education and you'll give a piece of rebuttal that's like this is bad for education and it will sort of be your own point try and avoid using your own points for rebuttal and a good way to avoid that is by responding to their reason not their point label specifically because it's unlikely that your arguments will be the same as their reasons but it might be the case that your arguments are similar to their arguments so that's one way to help practice rebuttal and another thing that you can do as like a tool for rebuttal is uh, if you're unsure of how to prove that something's wrong, try and prove that it uh, doesn't matter particularly. And so th this, again, is something that probably shouldn't be your first attempt at rebuttal. The best type of rebuttal is proving that things are wrong. But have a go at saying, like, here's why, even if it's true that you allow more people to use roads, that's actually a bad thing. Um, maybe because it increases congestion or, or something like that. And... That's a couple of ways that you can come up with some good rebuttal. If at the end of this you have any particular questions, uh, hopefully by the next session the Zoom will be operating uh, usefully, and I'll, I'll be able to answer. I'll be able to answer the questions in that session. If there's anything uh, particularly urgent, uh, like send send it to Tony, and Tony can send it on to me uh, to resolve. But thank you very much for watching this recording. Uh, best of luck with your debates that are coming up quite soon on this topic. Make sure to check out the QDU YouTube channel, which you presumably already found if you're watching this, uh, to see more videos on more topics in the future. Thank you.